Hello, uh, my name is Thomas Wolford. I am the author of Steampunk Gear, Gadgets, and Gizmos, and I am going to show you how to cheat using your tools and abuse them horribly and use them for things they were not meant to, but you're going to make something really cool. I'm going to turn a piece of this rod, which is three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch brass rod, into a tiny little cannon, a little bitty cannon. All right? So, first, I'm going to cut off my piece of rod. I'm using this guy here, cheap bandsaw, metal cutting blade. It will cut, it will cut soft metals, it will not cut hard metals. Don't do it. I should probably say, <laughs> I'm going to cut off about a four inch long piece. Nothing too big. I'm going to make like a three inch cannon. That's my wee piece of brass rod there. Now, just for safety's sake, I'm going to take this little sander here and I'm going to hit the edges so it doesn't have sharp bits on it. You could do this with a sanding block. You don't have to have a heavy duty sander. All I did was you know, go in because I beveled that edge a little bit just by hitting it in the sander just the right angle to kind of do that. All right, I'm going to design my cannon on the computer so it has a nice look to it. Um, this is exactly three and a half inches instead of four, but I'll still work with it. So first I'm going to make a rectangle with whatever program you're doing. You know, I'm using Corel Draw. So I'm going to make it three-eighths of an inch wide. Uh, point. 375, that's what 3 eighths of an inch is, by 3 and a half. Right there you can see I've made a rectangle. See? That's that. <laughs> Most cannons have a little ball or something on the back end, so I'm going to put a little ball there. Three-eighths of an inch, point three seven five inches by point three seven five. That is the breech block here. That's the back end of the cannon. So, let's see. See, I've made a taper on the cannon there, that type of thing. This is just to get my general size and shape. So I'm copying that, and then I'm flipping it that way, and it gives me both. And that gives me a rough cannon look to it. If I get rid of the outside, it looks like that. Ta-da! Now I'm going to print this on the computer, or on the printer. If I print that, it'll give me something to go on when I do this. I'll be able to go, oh, that's about right, yeah. Instead of just faking it. That 
is actually to scale. Right there. The cannon's going to look like. Cool. And now it's down into the lab to see if I can actually do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer some of this information from the paper to the piece of brass here. Uh, with my handy, this is my modified uh, piece there. That's where the ball goes to, the breech, the front of the cannon, like that. So the taper is going to go from there to there. I want to do a couple things. I want to put a little hole here, and I want to put a hole he about here, straight down. That's for the uh, the mount for the caissons or whatever you want to call. It. I don't I don't know enough about cannons, um, and that's for the hole in the back. So if you wanted to hang it off something, this is your friend. This little guy here. What it does is center punch or spring punch so when I push it down onto there it creates a tiny little dent right there that dent makes it so that when I go to drill through this it doesn't swivel off to the side it doesn't go off to the side anywhere I'm gonna do the same thing here for the other hole It's easier to bore these holes now than after you machine it, because you're going to machine curves into it or, or inclines into it. So it's not going to be as easy. Right now it's relatively flush or straight. I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole in the little one there, because I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch brass tubing in there as the part that swivels the cannon up and down. And a sixteenth inch hole in the back as the part that is the carriage return, or whatever they call it all thing on the back. Make sure that this travel here is far enough to go in through the hole there. By the way, this can be hideously dangerous because if it catches on this, it'll swing that little bar around and smack me in the hands or something like that. Watching this like a NASCAR race, hoping to see a wreck, aren't you? I can tell. Now I'm putting an eighth inch hole in the other one. That was the sixteenth inch hole. Brass because it's very soft as, as far as metals go. You could use aluminium. I would not recommend steel or such unless you're really good with those materials. I promised you tool abuse, and tool abuse you shall have. So I open the chuck up and I put this in here. Uh, just above the end of the piece. There's that little mark I made at the end of the muzzle. <clears throat> so now this is in there and I check to make sure it's see how it's not wobbling? Because if it wobbles that would be bad. Now I've got some files out. These are cheap files. These are I didn't get special files for this. Um, just things I found. I'm going to use the roughest file I have first. That's this guy here. By the way, I don't recommend you do any of this. <laughs> this is not the way this should be done. It should be done on a lathe by trained professionals. I'm just showing you how I do it. That's there for my lawyer. Right. <laughs> this turns a certain direction. I'm going to turn it on, and I know it's turning this way.
So now I'm going to mark where the ball is going to go by taking it, holding it this in one place, turning it. The breech goes to here. Back the muzzle. And the end of the gun.